All right. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to talk a little bit more about the technical details of GP Argo, uh, of how it came to be and, and how it was uh, uh, executed. Um, so GP Argo uh, kind of felt to me like, you know, you get a node, you get a node, everybody gets a node. Um, it did, the technology did evolve over the lifetime of the project. It definitely wasn't, what we proposed is definitely not what we ended up with. Um, and, uh, and how to get, uh, at the later slides, I talk about a little bit more about how do you get buy-in into GP Argo. And so I talk a lot about our visualizations that we've put together. I don't know how many uh, CIOs that I've had message me from these smaller institutions that want to say, you know, who's running on my GP Argo node? What science am I enabling? And these are some of the visualizations that we put together so that they could easily access this information and keep it updated. Um, and one thing I want to note, this is an excerpt from Frank's slide uh, yesterday. Uh, we are, uh, we go under the name of Great Plains Network in, in the OSG accounting, but we are one of the top contributors to the OS pool. Uh, and this is just, uh, when we say Great Plains Network, this is all the GP Argo nodes put together, both the ones that were purchased by CC Star and the ones that were added later by institutions that wanted to join GP Argo. So one of the uh, difficult things, especially at the beginning, was uh, shipping these nodes out to the different institutions. I believe uh, Dan had a comment to me that this is the first proposal that he's ever had it, had shipping costs as part of the budget uh, because he had to ship these nodes out to all these different nodes. Uh, but in this case, we didn't actually ship it using like a commercial person. We had a, uh, we had a system man from Kansas State uh, bring the node up to my house in Omaha. And then we had the system in from uh, uh, South Dakota, uh, from Vermilion, come down, spend the weekend with his wife in Omaha, and then picked up the node on the way out of town uh, back up to South Dakota. And so my house was a, uh, was a storage locker for a couple of days with this node. Um, and so, yeah, that's actually a picture of Ryan from- uh, Did you power it up I, while <laughs> running some jobs yeah. while it's trading? No. I think, I think my wife would have been upset about the noise of this thing. It's not a quiet <laughs> machine um, and also electricity costs. So no, I did not. Um, so yeah, oh, uh, so when we first shipped the nodes, we configured them at on site at KSU uh, with some disk imaging and some local scripts. And then we also include a WireGuard VPN so that it always would call back to the KSU so that we can always have access to it, even if the institution's not allowing uh, uh, incoming into the node itself. We always had access to the node through this VPN that we uh, connected. Um, when we first deployed it, it was all hand scripts and, and disk imaging, and then we moved over to Ansible. Uh, and so we were uh, we deployed the OS, uh, OSG pilot container and then various other things with Ansible. Um, we're working on contributing this recipe back to the OSG so other people can use it as well. Uh, so. Some of the things that Ansible deployed, the pilot container, CMFS, uh, the NVIDIA container driver, which changed over the lifetime of this uh, project. Uh, Crony, uh, we had a lot of trouble with uh, time synchronization between all these different sites, and so we had to synchronize within the uh, collaboration. And then, of course, Grafana for the visualization. I'll talk more about that later. Um, so the OSG was deployed on GP Argo uh, through the uh, OSG pilot container. And I know we haven't really talked about that much this meeting so far. I think it's talked about later on. Uh, I don't know where Brian Lynn is, but I think he talks about it later. Um, uh, so it's a Docker container that once started, it will start, it will accept OS pool jobs. It's a self-registration process. You get a token and that authenticates you to the OS pool and then jobs start to flow. Um, it supports GPU jobs if the node has a GPU. In, in the case of GPU Argo, we do. And so, uh, as I mentioned before, we wanted to provide <clears throat> a method uh, of, of justifying these nodes on these campuses, especially to like the CIOs and to the IT leaders on campus. And so it was important to answer some of these questions of like, what science is using GP Argo? How is my uh, institution no institution's node utilized? and who is using my institution's node. And so we came up with a dashboard. So this is the line that was mentioned a couple times yesterday, right down uh, what's roughly the Missouri River. Uh, it goes a little bit over to the east then, but uh, uh, runs down. So these are all the GP Argo nodes and all the sites that they're located in, um, all within uh, uh, GPN. 
And then uh, at the bottom, we have these like summary statistics. Um, these are core hours contributed over the lifetime of the project. These are a number of OSG projects that uh, have run on GP Argo. And this is the number of institutions that have used uh, GP Argo nodes. And so this is all information from the OSG accounting system. As well. so, so, so these numbers are over what time period? Uh, over the lifetime of GP Argo. So it's pro uh, probably like the last two years-ish. Two I and see, years, okay. So. It it may be useful to to have some kind of uh, uh, last year, last X years, or whatever. Right. Yeah. Um, and then uh, Dan showed this before, but uh, uh, another visualization. Again, we uh, this is the link to the uh, to the dashboard, but uh, which is a live dashboard. But this is something that we are able to give to the CIOs and the uh, IT leaders at these campuses. They get to see the name of their campus. Over on the left, uh, these are where all the nodes are located. Um, and then these are the projects that are actually running on the nodes. Um, and so you can actually scroll down. You can see uh, all the institutions, the field of science uh, that are using the GPR Go. And then um, because some of these universities are a little bit competitive, we actually uh, put the core hours by facility. And so that uh, Wichita State can uh, claim uh, they're the largest ones. And then, and then it goes on from there. Um, and this is just a bigger one uh, that we provide to the universities, uh, again, showing uh, the usage by, uh, by university. Uh, so part of the monitoring that we give to these people is uh, we also uh, give them very detailed information about what projects are actually running on, on these GPR Go nodes. Um, and this is, uh, like, uh, this is from OSG, so it gives you the OSG project name, the field of science what the institution is from and then the PI names. So they, it really makes it personal that these people are actually running on these GPR Go nodes. And then one, one question that they ask is what ran at my institution? And so this is, uh, excuse me, this is from University of Arkansas's uh, GPR Go node. And so what we can do is we can tell you exactly uh, the field of science that ran uh, by either the NSF field of science or by uh, the field of science using the OSG. Uh, the, the core hours, like what institutions actually ran at the University of Arkansas. So we can, we can drill down to the specific node and we can tell you what ran on this specific node over the course of the, of the lifetime of that node. Um, some of the difficulties that we've had uh, with GP Argo, um, working with different universities as Dan mentioned, that, that was the most difficult thing, uh, especially with networking. Um, for example, one university who shall not be named, blocked all outgoing connections a couple months ago. Um, uh, so uh, the OSG requires outgoing for data transfers, monitoring, management of resources. Um, the site offered to whitelist uh, IPs, which is a very difficult to do for the OSG. We, we gave them a list, but uh, you know, there's always gonna be failures now on that specific node because you, you don't know what's gonna happen. Um, and we're, uh, this is part of the uh, relationships that we've created in GPN. We're working with, uh, this university to try to, you know, kind of lessen, give, give this node or this, these research uh, uh, more of a DMZ type feel so that it's actually able to access the, uh, the internet a little bit easier. Um, but again, we're still working with this. Another difficulty we had was GPUs all the way from the host to the container. Um, so there's a lot of layers of abstraction between the GPU on the host all the way up to like an OSG container. Um, and so the OSG pilot container, when we first started using it, it already had the GPU support, so that was good. Um, the NVIDIA software, uh, they actually packaged something to export uh, GPUs up to the container, um, but that changed mid-project of how they were doing the packaging, how they were doing the software, and so we had to completely uh, redo that, and uh, that's something we used Ansible for a lot. Now, originally, uh, if running on a GPU-enabled node, only GPU-enabled uh, jobs would run on that node. Uh, that was the initial configuration of the OSG container. Um, and again, we worked with OSG. And we, less, we loosened that policy such that the pilot container uh, will run non-GPU jobs just using CPU if there's no GPU jobs available. Uh, we ended up seeing uh, some idle nodes whenever uh, we ran the OSG container just because it was looking for GPU jobs and if they're not available, it would just sit idle. And so we'd rather use the CPU in that case. So the future, um, Dan already mentioned the GP engine. Uh, so I'm a co-PI on the GP engine. Uh, um, it's uh, the primary is through University of Missouri with Grant Scott. Um, and so it started 
just a few days ago <clears throat> on July 1st. And so the plan is to integrate the resources with the national research platform. These are all the uh, locations of the nodes of where they're going um, and then contribute to the OSG through the NRP. So, um, and so the, the goal is to uh, uh, run uh, sort of these like Jupyter notebooks and these the Kubernetes type workflows uh, on these uh, NRP resources such that they can target their local institutions node and then expand out if needed. That's my slides. Thank you very much. <clears throat>